My name is Miłosz Skowroński and this video is my attempt at deconstructing System Shock 2. The game is a blend of FPS and RPG genres and is set in a sci-fi survival horror theme. This pioneering game is influenced by the works of James Cameron of the Terminator and Alien franchises and other dystopian science fiction filmmakers and writers. Due to the complexity of the character development system, the game caters for gamers familiar with the mechanics of other role-playing games. Mature setting, violence and suggestive theme earned the game an ESRP rating of Mature 17, but no Peggy rating is available. The game released in 1999 was a commercial success and has greatly influenced many other successful sci-fi action RPG franchises like Bioshock, Deus Ex, Dead Space and Mass Effect. In addition to a single player mode, the game, pay the game offers a co-op co multiplayer for up to three people with the same campaign in both cases. Single player can be played in four difficulties, easy, medium, hard and impossible, and the player can switch between difficulties at any time. The majority of the campaign takes place aboard the spaceship from Brown and is therefore divided into decks, plus several small areas outside of von Braun. Decks can be freely traversed and revisited at any time, while other areas usually cannot be revisited. The game is played on two parallel complementary planes. As a classic first-person shooter, backed by customizable shortcuts to consumables, psi powers and all of the 14 weapons available in-game, but there is also a mouse cursor operated overlay, typical, typical of RPGs, which gives access to many other options essential for character development, like the inventory, stats, logs, etc. The game is slow-paced, providing the player with the sense of vulnerability and entrapment. What's unique to the game, even by today's FPS standards, is the unorthodox movement capabilities, like leaning to the sides and to the front, and climbing high ledges. The interaction with the world can take place in both the FPS and RPG mode by pressing Use button, when the reticle or cursor is pointing at an object. The RPG mode also allows the player to interact with other objects in their inventory, perform repairs and modifications, consume food, and equip armor. The HUD in the FPS mode consists of traditional elements like reticle, health bar and ammo counter but also includes less conventional elements, a display showing type of ammo used and condition of the weapon, minimap with points of interest highlighted, a box that, box that encloses interactive objects and enemies highlighted by the reticle, and a text box that displays the name of the highlighted entity. In the RPG mode, the HUD is greatly extended and very responsive, giving audio feedback whenever an action is performed. The game can be played in three classes, a Marine Combat Specialist, a Mar Navy Technician or an OSA Psionic Agent. Each class offers its own finely balanced set of advantages and disadvantages, with character development being a major aspect of the game. In the Recruitment Center, which also serves as the Virtual Reality Training Center, the player can choose their class and develop initial skill set by going on non-playable interplanetary deployments. Each deployment grants the player an increase in stats. Later in the game, the stats and skills can be freely increased by spending cyber modules in specialized stations called cyber upgrade units. Each level of each stat or skill requires different number of modules which can be obtained via transfer from NPCs or can be found in many places, promoting extensive exploration of the surroundings which also yields other useful items. The trade-off is that the most of the ship swarms with enemies and some of the areas are somewhat difficult to reach. Other forms of upgrading the character can be obtained at OS upgrade machines, which grant the player permanent traits, like inventory slots. There are also software upgrades, which grant a single level of given skill on, a cent on certain conditions. The inventory allows the player to customize their weapons and supplement their character's shortcomings with boosters, armors and consumables. Research is used to discover the properties of unknown objects and learn the physiology of the enemies, and is performed with the help of chemicals, usually found in chemical storage rooms. Different items require different combinations of chemicals, and so the player is frequently forced to backtrack to other decks to pick up the needed chemicals. Some items and weapons also require electric energy to operate and must be recharged using recharge stations scattered around the ship, or portable batteries which take up inventory. These mechanics show how the player's passive and offensive capabilities complement each other and balance each other out throughout the game. The player is frequently used to uh, asked to put himself in combat situations 
to advance his passive skills but also conversely to utilize his passive skills and stats to gain an edge in combat. The game revolves around story progression. The player must satisfy a number of objectives put forward by an NPC on each deck. Upon completion of the objectives, new areas will become accessible. Failing some objectives will, re re will result in player's death, but a quantum bio-reconstruction machine present in most areas allows the player to seamlessly resume their progress. The final area concludes with a classic boss fight with a notorious AI called Shodan. Along the way, the player collects discs with crew logs, which serve as a mechanic for revealing the story to the player. Because the game takes place on a spaceship, the environments are visually very similar, but clever level design and visual cues, coupled with a minimap, allow the player to quickly find their way around. The combat is performed with the use of ranged and melee weapons, and psionic powers. Conventional firearms can be loaded with several types of ammunition, including anti-personnel and armor piercing. Grenade launcher also includes specialized rounds, all effective against particular types of enemies. Headshots are usually the most effective method of dealing damage, but additional information about the enemies can be learned through their research of their organs, increasing the damage dealt to that enemy. All this makes for unchallenging and satisfactory combat mechanics. Enemies use different tactics to attack the player, but are also consistent in the sense that every enemy type can be expected to repeat their behavior on, the, on every encounter, allowing for combat tactics to develop. The AI has a cone of vision that allows the player to sneak up to the enemies or avoid them completely, but the simulated hearing will, will cause the enemies to turn around if the player comes too close. Also, the security cameras, once the player is spotted, will raise the alarm sending waves of enemies towards the player's last known position. If the player proceeds too cautiously, the Game Master AI controls the flow of the game by spawning enemies nearby. The game received universal praise from critics for its sound design. All of the HUD and the menu operations and every form of interaction give clear audio feedback to the player. The enemies give away their position by random idle talk or re reaction to loud noises and give feedback to the player when they are agitated, attacking, hurt or dying. I hope you enjoyed this short deconstruction video. Thank you.